Uh, hoi hoi folks, good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world. My name's Sean aka Uncle Frogface and welcome to today's video. If you're new here then welcome, if you're not new then welcome back. So, something very strange happened to me recently. I was clearing out some things because, as I might have mentioned once or twice before, my husband and I are moving house very soon, so we're starting to pack up all of our belongings. So I was in this little cupboard back here, which is my art cupboard, uh, and something very strange happened. So I was going through some small boxes and I could hear some whispering coming from somewhere. So I opened up one of the boxes. I found inside a simple wooden peg, but, and that's where the whispering was coming from. So I held it up to my ears, and suddenly my mind was filled with images of otherworldly beings and tentacles and horrors of the night. So here we are. I have a peg, and we're going to see exactly what we can do with it. So we have a peg, we have some milliputs, and we have some tools. Now I'm using Milliput today with this peg because as I, I mentioned last time we did a sculpt, my uh, oven is still broken, still hasn't been fixed. So uh, I'm using Milliput in place of Super Sculpey. So I've got my rubber gloves on because uh, some people can have a bit of a reaction to this. It's an epoxy putty. I happen to be one of those people. So I don't know why the individual parts give me a reaction, but once it's mixed together, I'm absolutely fine with it. So I always wear gloves for mixing. Uh, you can see this is supposed to be one part yellow to one part grey, but the grey, because this is quite old, has gone a, a little bit brown. But once you start mixing it in, it's, it's all good, no problem at all. So, for this you have to mix it for four minutes, which is why I've sped this up so much. I don't want you to sit there for four whole minutes while I mix all of this together. But the idea for today's sculpt is we are going to be sculpting a Lovecraft inspired elder thing. So HP Lovecraft created lots of different monsters and it's kind of whole cosmos and mythos of different monsters. And the elder things are just one of those creatures. I think they first appeared in the story at the Mountains of Madness. And uh, they're described as being about six foot tall, uh, having five uh, radial symmetry in five parts, being more vegetable than animal, having tentacles that could come out of little furrows in their ridges that come from top to bottom, and having tentacles at the top and bottom like a starfish. That they're, they're insane creatures. Uh, but it's one of those things that has just stuck with me when I read the story. I, I just love the description of these creatures. So that's what I'm going for. So starting off by blocking out the body with a bit of foil first to give a, a little bit of extra bulk to the peg. And then using the milliput just to go in. And I'm smoothing this out with uh, my finger, uh, the back of a spoon tool and some water. Water and epoxy putty work really well together for smoothing out. So I wanted with this whole sculpture to have that kind of mini sculpt feel, this kind of miniature monster, but also stay true to what a peg doll is. So peg dolls, even though they've been create, created into dolls, you can still see their pegs. So I'm keeping the hole, the kind of the peg slot in this sculpt so that it still harkens back to that traditional craft of uh, a peg doll making. So we have got the kind of body bolt out and I've got that little bit at the bottom there as well. And I'm going to come in now and add some of the ridges. So it's got these kind of uh, lateral radial symmetry down its body and it's got these five ridges that tentacles come out of and wings come out of as well. It can have up to five tentacles and five wings. So I'm just laying those in, smoothing them out and then with a dental explorer tool coming in and just creating this kind of this ridge in the middle. Kind of imagining that's the opening that the tentacles and everything come out of. And this actually went by quite quickly. The sculpture part itself, quite quick. The bit that took time was between parts. So usually with Super Sculpey, I'd stick it in the oven for, you know, 10, 15 minutes just to harden up between, um, between sections. And then I'm ready to sculpt the next bit. 
this takes four hours to dry between sections so <laughs> you'll see that the four hours later come out a few times here so i'm starting to do these tentacles so tentacles are described as being tentacles that split and then split again so i've just split them in two and then split each of those two parts into two again i've done some little feeding tubes and then five little balls as well which will be the eyeballs and they are all to dry and kind of cure so that I can come back and work with them later. So this part here, they also have wings. I didn't want to do five wings. Uh, I mean, these are the older beings are supposed to be from outer space and these wings help them glide through space and through, um, through the air on Earth as well. And I didn't want them to kind of be too um, animal-like. I still wanted to keep that kind of tentacle feel. So once everything is sculpted, leave it to cure for four hours and here I have a fresh box of milliputs. I'm not going to put you through the whole process of kneading it again but um, we're starting off with the eye stalks at the top so I wanted this to look kind of like a starfish so the first thing I wanted to do was to get the kind of eye stalks in first so I've got these already cured balls I'm just sticking them to the end of a little piece breaking it off and then sticking it on and then positioning the eyes where I want them to go. They almost look like slug or snail uh, eyes. That's uh, the third one, the fourth one, and then finally all of them are in. And now the tentacles at the bottom. We're doing this much in the same way. So this is how they move around. Kind of imagine a starfish or an octopus on the, uh, on the ocean floor and how they move. Uh, and that's how these elder things are supposed to move as well. So I'm creating these tentacles sticking them to the base and then blending them in i can't quite get the symmetry that i want but by doing three on one side two on the other and positioning the tentacles i kind of get a nice assimilation of symmetry and again we're just moving this in with the back of a spoon tool and a little bit of water and these blend in so nicely milliput is quite hard to get any detail on um, you just have to have a little bit of patience and really kind of experiment with your tools and see what you can do. So I'm positioning the tentacles into interesting poses here um, and smoothing out any kind of imperfections or any breakages. I do actually forgot to film it, but I came back with a dotting tool and just went all over and stippled the tentacles at the bottom just to kind of give them a little bit extra texture. And once I've smoothed in the eye stalks, it's time to work a little bit on these wings. So peg dolls traditionally are made of a peg, paint, sometimes some yarn, but pipe cleaners feature quite heavily. So I've got these pipe cleaners, and this is what I'm going to make the kind of the, the stems of the leathery wings out of. So I'm just twisting the tops all together. I've cut them into different lengths, uh, the same length for each wing twisting the tops together and then with that little bit of leftover milliput I'm just going to use that to secure these uh, these pipe cleaners to the top of the wing, wing stems that I've already created, these kind of tentacly wing, wing stems. Again this actually worked quite nicely, I was uh, very happy with this. Four more hours later once that is all dry. Now I want to add a bit more detail, I want, as I say I want to get these kind of starfish like feel on the top so I'm bringing in the top of all of the eye stalks into these kind of ridges as if it's the underside of a starfish a starfish on the underside I've got kind of these little um, holes or, or what's the best way to describe it almost like gutters I suppose that sounds awful <laughs> but it's it's where all of their um, hundreds of, of tiny little feet come out of that they uh, move along the ocean floor with so that's kind of what I've gone with here and almost a, a little feeder hole at the top something else that these elder beings have these elder things are feeder tubes so the feeder tubes that I created before didn't like them really didn't like them but I've got a different solution for that so before I get to that I'm creating eyelids for all of these eyes. So I didn't want to go with the kind of human horizontal eyes. I'm going for more of an alien vertical eye, eye opening. And once I've done all five of those, this is my solution for those feeder tentacles. I'm just adding tiny, tiny little tentacles coming out of the top. And kind of imagining that maybe they can stretch to pick things up, or maybe they can just use their arm tentacles to bring things up to these little feeder tentacles at the top. I don't know how these beings work. This is just kind of what was going through my mind at the time. Maybe it was that whispering was starting to seep into my brain. 
Um, once I kind of got the top part done, I wasn't too happy with the bottom. I felt it needed a little bit more blending in. So I used a little bit more milliput and just kind of made it look like the skin was stretching underneath, kind of like the skin between the tentacles on an octopus and give it that kind of fleshy look. So now it's time to attach the main tentacles. Um, and I'm doing this again with, just with a little milliput. So the first one was a little bit of an experiment and it worked nicely. So I went along and put all of the blobs in first, so kind of openings for where the tentacles are going to come out. And then simply pushed them into the milliput and they bonded together really, really nicely. So now we're onto the wings and I thought I would use the classic PVA glue and water uh, and then some tissue paper but I thought I would save a bit of time and kind of thicken things up by using some kitchen roll instead um, and I'm just going to tell you right off the bat this did not work. Don't be a Sean, uh, you just use, just use tissue paper, it will save you a lot of heartache. This was too thick for what I needed it to do. Um, for some paper mache kind of experiments I suppose it might work but I think there's a reason why people use tissue paper and not kitchen paper um, but you kind of get the idea of what, what I did here um, I ended up doing both wings and then in the morning hated it and just stripped it all off and redid it but you kind of it, it was exactly the same process just with tissue paper instead and once it was all dry Again, just a little bit more milliput, and I'm attaching this to uh, two of the openings. So, like I say, these can have five. I'm just attaching two, smoothing it in. The next day, here we are, all dry, and not looking too bad. I'm pretty happy with this. So, I'm going to paint everything black, because I want it to be quite dark in colour. But I'm using paint and India ink. So, I don't know if... I've seen this on a video somewhere, or read it, or uh, maybe it was, just came to me in a dream, but I thought to myself, I like to have my um, my paint quite thin when I'm doing uh, kind of my underpainting, my undercoat, and when I'm using black, if I use water, it dilutes the pigment as well, so it keeps it nice and fluid, but the pigment also kind of is quite bad as well, and you need a couple of coats, so I thought, how can I mitigate this? I've got a big bottle of India ink, I've got a quite a lot of India ink actually uh, but I thought I'll just just mix that with it instead and see how that goes and my god I have to tell you this was a revelation it needed a single coat to paint the whole thing it dried just as quickly as acrylic paint the coverage was phenomenal the pigment was phenomenal I really really like this if you're painting something black uh, and you want to do it quickly and make sure you get all of the details of your piece water it down with India ink look at this I was so happy but we need to add some color so that is what we did next and I'm starting off with the main part of the body I'm painting it like a, a mottled green color so this is sap green um, some burnt umber a little bit of white because we're painting over black and white gives a little bit of opacity so you don't lose all of your colour. I wanted a lot of it to sink into the black but I still wanted some colour to show through. Um, and then I just went through and painted the main parts that I wanted to be painted in this colour. So this is just the, the main body and kind of the stems of the wings, those tentacly stems. And then when all that was dry I wanted to come in and pick out some of the details with I've just taken again that same green paint added a bit more white to lighten it up a very um, dry brush this is an old old brush um, and I'm just going through and just dry brushing over some of the details just to pick out some of the edges and some of the kind of finer sculpted parts this is where I love kind of bringing things to life this kind of painting when you're building up your colors in small layers um, and kind of adding and adding and adding, sometimes taking away as well if you need to. Um, but I, I really enjoy this. I wish I could just do this sometimes, but then I wouldn't get had the fun of sculpting as well, and I do really enjoy that. So because of the kind of paper mache technique we used on the wings, it, there was a lot of texture there. So the dry brushing on the wings, and I actually come back with a few different colours, you'll see in a bit, was so much fun, brought out so much texture. 
I should have maybe used some more of that on the body as well to bring out some more texture. So these these little um, these kind of gashes that the the tentacles can come out of. I'm painting in a purple. So this is purple and a little bit of magenta and again a little bit of white to bring out the opacity. And I'm just going to go through and paint all five of those kind of ridges that we sculpted in. And once those are all done, we are coming in again. We're doing some dry brushing, and I'm just catching the ends of the eye stalks first because I thought that would be an area I'm kind of thinking of the, the kind of extremities so like your fingertips and your toes and your nose and your ears you know there's always like a, a bit of pink uh, to those areas so I'm bringing that same thing to this alien creature um, it's got green skin it might have purple blood or green blood or who knows so I'm using this purple as my kind of extremities color so ends of the iron stalks, ends of the tentacles, and some of the wing as well. So not all of the wing, just a little bit of the wing. And again, you can really see that texture coming through. I was so happy with this. Okay, so once I was happy with all of that, I went to bring in just another level, level of detail. So this is uh, some more of that magenta with some white in it to make it more of a pinky color. I'm just kind of very, with a very watered down mix, painting in uh, some veins on the body and on the wings. And this is not to really stand out, this is just when you look close, it kind of gives it an extra dimension, a, a, an extra level of, of realness, just having these small details that you can see when you look close up. And then I really like this colour, so this is what I decided to paint all of the tentacles in, so the, the kind of the midsection tentacles, it's arm tentacles, um, and using the not so watered down part of the paint so I can get some really nice coverage. And again, not worry too much about the coverage because if it's a bit patchy it gives it a bit of a mottled look. And then I'm doing the same for the little feeder tentacles on the top as well to bring a little bit of continuity through the whole piece and um, finally I think I'm going to come in and just add a little bit more to the very very tips of the feet tentacles and this kind of green purple colour scheme it's very Disney villain uh, which is very <laughs> me this is a much more kind of muted version of that but that that whole uh, pinky purple green aesthetic is so me green is my favourite colour Purple's my second favourite colour. Um, I would dress in, in kind of a Maleficent male outfit every day if I could. But once all of those bits of painting are done, it's time for the very last bit, which is the eyes. So I'm painting the eyes in yellow, and then I'll just go through afterwards and dot in some tiny black pupils. Well, there we have it. Here we have our Lovecraft inspired Elder Thing peg doll. And you can see we've still got the whole of the peg there, just like any other peg doll, just a little bit creepier. Um, I really enjoyed making this. This was a lot of fun. And of course, you know, having the limitation of not being able to use super sculpting, only having milliper and having an unusual base, those kinds of challenges, I live for that. It was, it was so much fun to do. Um, as always, I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Guys, guys, before you go, before you go, I, I just have to tell you, I was, was, I was getting ready to edit, and uh, can you hear that? More sounds. There are more of them. And until next time, goodbye.